This won't surprise anybody who knows me, but I am easily distracted. <laughs> very, very easily distracted. Occasionally, even at our weekly staff meetings where I am mostly right on target and right on topic, I will go off on a tangent with something completely irrelevant, a story or a quotation or a song of some sort. And so in those very, very rare occasions, I am not only distracted, but also, I fear, a little distracting. It's not smirking. <laughs> in that way, and only in that way, I am a little bit like the devil himself. The word here in this passage for devil, it's a complicated word. In Greek, it's diabolon, the slanderer, the accuser, the distractor. Literally, it means the one who throws things across our path. Diabolon. The one who finds ways of distracting us from our true path, from our true task, from our true identity, from our true selves. This week, I have found those temptations particularly hard to resist. Oscar Wilde once said, I can resist anything. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> except <laughs> temptation. <laughs> And I found that to be totally true. I think some part of me just needs to be tempted away from the things that I have been wrestling with, from the things that I have been struggling with, like the news of the world, like the news of our poor nation, particularly from the news of the United Methodist Church. Anybody else noticing that? <laughs> <laughs> the temptations are there, always the temptations. And so the other day I was thinking about that and I was wondering, I guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way? My girl, <laughs> talking about my girl. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, see, you see what I mean though? It is tempting. The distractions. Yes. <laughs> so it is some comfort to know that Jesus also faces the temptation. So also faces that uh, Jesus also faces those distractions at the hand of the diabol, the hand of the diabolical the hand of that devil we know. And they're serious temptations. In our passage today, Jesus is wandering in the wilderness for 40 days. 40 days of fasting and 40 days of temptations. 40 days of distractions. That's why our season of Lent lasts 40 days. 40 days minus Sundays, because Sundays are always feast days. Many celebrations of Easter, and you can't feast and fast on the same day, which should be some comfort for those of you who give enough chocolate for that. <laughs> it looks at first as though Jesus goes to the wilderness alone. That Jesus goes to the desert alone. That Jesus is there for those 40 days all by himself. But he's not. He's not alone, is he? For one thing, he's got the devil. <laughs> That's cold comfort. But who else is there with him? Who else is there with Jesus? God. The Spirit of God is there all 40 days and beyond. The Spirit drives him into the wilderness, it says. The Spirit is with him for those 40 days, says Luke. And when everything's over, Luke tells us that Jesus is filled with the power of the Spirit and moves on into his work in the power of that Spirit. And thank God the Spirit is with him because those temptations, 
Those distractions, all kidding aside, those are some serious stuff. And really, there's some diabolical stuff. Luke spells out three of the temptations, and I want to look at each of them briefly, because I think they tell us something about our own temptations and our own distractions at a point in time when we can ill afford to be distracted for long. And some distractions are important. The trick is, as Reverend Paris Reedhead used to say, that sometimes the important is outweighed by the imperative. And the imperative is that still more excellent way that Paul tells us about in the first letter of the Corinthians. That still more excellent way, that way of love. And so first temptation. First temptation. The devil tells Jesus, prove to me that you're a child of God. Prove to me that you are the son of God. Turn these stones into bread. I know you're hungry. Well, turning stones into bread seems like a hard thing to do. At my house, we sometimes do it the other way around. We take work <laughs> and bread, and after a week, it's turned to stone. But the other way around is hard. And Jesus is hungry. The temptation is real. And after 40 days, you just know that he is dying to, to deal with this devil. But he declines, doesn't he? And he leans on scripture. Pretty famous piece of scripture. One does not live by bread alone. He leaves out the next part, but implies it, but from every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Not that Jesus has anything against producing bread in unusual circumstances. We all know we can look to the feeding of the 5,000 in the middle of nowhere for evidence of that. But he's not tempted by this devil. He is not letting himself be distracted by this devil. He knows who he is. And he didn't, doesn't need any validation from some distracting devil to tell him who he is, and we don't either. It's been a natural thing for me this week to wonder, of course, if this uh, Methodist thing that's going on is going to lead to the end of my working life. It's got to somehow to lead to the end of my illustrious career, my being able to put bread on the table. Because, of course, it's all about me. <laughs> And the devil, in whatever guise, uses fears like that to distract us from the path, distract us from what we know we need to do. And we know we need to do it without fear. We know we need to do the work of love and justice without that fear pulling us back and distracting us. And friends, we do not have to prove or validate ourselves to anybody but God. Amen? Amen. We, and especially the LGBTQI friends among us, do not have to prove or demonstrate that they are God's beloved children any more than Jesus had to. Amen? Amen. Second temptation. This devil, this diabolically distracting devil, tempts Jesus with political power next. And sure, that's tempting. I think our conservative white evangelical co-religionists, that's such a big word, have found that fact to be terribly, terribly tempting over the last two years. And we have fallen into that same thing often enough. But, once again, scripture comes to the aid of our friend Jesus, and Jesus says, it is written, Worship Adonai. Worship the Lord your God and serve only God. Because for Jesus, there is one and only one who is worthy of worship. One and only one who makes a way where there is no way. I was thinking about that on Ash Wednesday. So often during the service here on Ash Wednesday, but especially as Pastor Juana Brown launched into that beautiful song. We worship you, we worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle. 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, that is who you are. And by the tenth time we went through it, I, I got it. The way maker, the one who makes a way for Jesus, the one who makes a way for us, is the one who makes a way for the church, is the one who makes a way when there is no way, a way when it just doesn't look like there is a way, the one who sees a way even when the way forward has turned into a way backwards. Okay. Third temptation. Testing God. Doubting God. Making God prove God's self to us. And by now the devil has learned some scripture. Did you notice that? <laughs> the devil is on to, on to some scripture. That shouldn't really surprise us. Even the devil can quote scripture. That's what the saying does. <laughs> Even the devil can quote scripture for its purpose. And again, he's telling Jesus, you've got to prove yourself. You gotta prove you're worthwhile, prove you're worthy, prove that you are of sacred word. Come on, Jesus, prove yourself. Prove yourself to me, says the devil. And prove yourself to yourself. But did Je does Jesus fall for that? No. Does Jesus fall for that? No. Does he fall for that? No. And neither should you. Because you too are filled with the Spirit of God, you too move in the power of that same Spirit. And can anyone separate us from the Spirit of God? Can anyone separate us from the love of God? Can any devil do that to me or to you? Can any hardship or distress or persecution do that to you? Can any peril, can any sword separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? God. In all things, we are more than conquerors through the one who loves us. And nothing ever in all creation will separate us from the love of God. We've come this far on our way forward by faith, by leaning on God, by trusting in the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. We can't turn around and go backwards. We can't turn around and go backwards. We won't turn around. We've come this far by faith. I invite you to stand and let's sing that together. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in God's word. God has never failed us.